this is like an upgrade. But these aren't animals. Sure we are. We're just meat puppets. Meat puppets? You had an interesting child. Hi, friend. I'm Ralph. Let's pray in the PDT together. Hey folks, welcome back to After Work Gaming. Tonight we're back in Kane. Uh, and you'll notice that instead of being near the PDT printer lab, which we uh, got access to last time, we are in the environmental control area. And the reason for that is when we got to the printer lab, we found out that when we took down the reactor last time, we had fried a circuit breaker, which made it impossible to open the door without fixing it. Okay? Now, I have an idea. It's a little squirrely. But before then, I realized that what we haven't done is we haven't tried to open up these doors. And we have this ID card here. So I figured why not just at least see maybe one of them opens and we can have a, an out from here. No? No? Okay, come over here. Anything? Adley? No? Okay, what about this one? No, it's locked, so... Okay, whatever. Uh, there is another reason for this, and I will tell you why. Okay, no. Um, so, there is another reason for why I was trying the, ca the card now, of all times. So, let me do this. Let me go back to the printer lab ex entrance corridor, and I will see you guys back there, because it's... I don't want to subject you guys to the whole travel period. Uh, I will see you guys back there, and then we'll talk about how we may, may, uh, go about trying to get through or get around the lack of a circuit breaker. Okay? I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, hey, folks. So we're back here. Uh, this is where we left off last time, literally the actual location. Now, as you can see, the door says the door is without power. That's the red symbol. And this is the fuse box where... This is the circuit breaker that burnt out when we overloaded the reactor, okay? Uh, and this is where you would put a fresh one, and I guess this means call a technician, okay? Now, here's my thought process. A circuit breaker essentially is a piece of metal which bridges these contacts, which is where the live electricity is, and if the, uh, if the current spikes past a certain point, the circuit breaker is designed to melt or in some other way break the current so that you have to reset it or whatever, uh, and also to prevent damage, okay? But essentially, it's a piece of metal, right? And you can get around it and sacrifice a little safety uh, by essentially using any metal and just jamming it in there, okay? Now, it hasn't escaped my mention, uh, my notice that we have a couple of things here that are, in fact, metallic. Uh, specifically, we have the blade and we have the ID card. That's why I was trying it out in that other room, okay? And it says a thin metal access card. Okay, but first let's use the blade. Now, technically both of these are utility items, but I can't think of anything else other than, you know, jamming a piece of metal in here, so. Yeah, it's official. I'm losing my mind. All right, Hadley, relax. You don't have to be so aggressive about it not working. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. This one is labeled Danny Boland. Well, Danny, let's see if you can save me again. I don't think it works that way. No, but seriously. Okay, so now we have to <laughs> we have to resort quick well here's the thing, right? I guess it stands to serve because technically it needs to be in this shape, right? This circuit breaker is in a particular shape. So can we, for example, I think this is probably the only piece of metal that we have on hand that will actually work. Can we use the Omni tool? around it might fit probably not no I think that we're on to something and I have a very 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 silly idea don't laugh but check this out okay we got the powder the powder is multi-purpose but the powder will then go on the card So if somebody had the same idea as me, fine. The card's static plastic surface is now entirely coated with the ultra-fine protein powder. Uh, and if you guys don't know where this is going, here's where it's going. We're going to use the card, now coated with the powder. We're going to press it into that uh, space where you would put a new circuit breaker, okay? In theory, in theory, it, like with the, 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 
the fingerprints, it should leave a trace of the pattern and shape of the circuit breaker on it. And then we can use the Omni tool and cut out, you know, whatever it is we need from the card. Essentially, we're going to we're going to find a way of taking an impression and then we're going to take uh, we're going to strip away all the excess so we can fit it in here. OK. Oh, my God, it works. <laughs> That worked out better than I thought it would. Yeah, I'm with you, Hadley. This was kind of a pie-in-the-sky move, but awesome. Awesome that this was the solution. Because it's it's not the first choice. It's not even the second choice. But on the other hand, kind of makes sense if you think about it, which is really cool and something I really appreciate in this game. All right, so the Melted Circuit Breaker is now imprinted on the card's surface. Okay, well, now we take the Omni tool because it's got these utility blades and stuff, right? And then we cut it out. Yeah. Cut ID card. It's basically a clone of the Melted Circuit Breaker. Now what? Well, I don't know, Hadley. Probably put it in. Well done, me. Thanks, Denny. You're a lifesaver. All right, let's go into the printer lab. Sorry, I mean, gee whiskers. What is it? It's brains. Brains? Brains. Animal? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay, seen brains in jars, but let's look around the room real quick. Start out here and then we'll just transition. So I see a PDA, the private journal has been knocked to the floor, sure. Uh, worn wooden desk. Coffee stains and a random assortment of inscrutable and insignificant academic junk clutter the antique walnut top. Okay. Bloated brain floating in vat. Lumps of tissue have started to separate from the frontal and occipital lobes and squirm like bloodless tentacles in the preservation fluid. The brain nutrient tank, the stuff of science fiction body horror turned into terrifying reality. Okay. Anything else here? Detached brain. Viscous preservation fluid bubbles around the disembodied brain. A faint rotting smell permeates the immediate air. Brain nutrient tank. A perfusion of oxygenated blood substitute and artificial cerebrospinal fluid into the preservation fluid can keep. Oh, a perfusion can keep the samples viable for months, even years at a time. Okay, personal data tag printer. Oh, this thing. The inside of the tube is encrusted with ice, perhaps as a result of cryogenic freezing. A low hum radiates from this brain nutrient tank. Medical hologram. A swirling mass of neon particles makes up an animated, anatomically accurate model of a human skull. The effect is probably much more disconcerting than the lab designers intended. I don't know. I'm pretty sure the lab designers really didn't care about the effect this would have on people. Thrumming machinery. Barely perceptible, low-level vibrations rumble through the scanner at irregular intervals. Bloodstained bed. The cloying stench of putrefaction hangs like a pall over the plastic palate. Man, that is an awesome, awesome sentence. Sorry, I just really like it. It's also got alliterative properties, which I'm also all about. Um, so that's it. Okay, so let's, before we interact with this thing, let's read the PDA. I just want to make sure that's the only, those are the two things we can interact with. Okay, can we search the desk? No. All right, read the PDA. Oh my god. Sharon Kane Musk. Really? Sharon K. Musk, January 27. That fucking bitch. I mean, I get it. She's John's daughter. She's a big deal or whatever, but I'm a Kane, and that spoiled brat needs to know her place. So maybe I'm not her biological mother, not some nobody gutter whore from the dust colonies, but her father and I are lovers now, and she has to accept that and show some respect. I think I'm going to start insisting that she calls me mother, just for today's insolence and I can probably use John's pathetic piety to play the two of them off each other when she inevitably defies me. 
That should be amusing. Besides, without me, the whole team would be totally screwed because I'm the only one who can go near Samantha. Me. Not Julia. Not even John. Me. Okie dokie. February 10th. Oh, some of these aren't dated. Some of these are like numbers. Interesting. February 10th. Samantha and I have a mutual understanding, I think. Uh, experiential bond. Me with my disabilities and she with her idiosyncrasies. Ever since the stroke, people treat me like I'm different. Oh, she had a stroke. I see. Okay, that, that explains the sort of paralysis on one side. Okay. Ever since the stroke, people treat me like I'm different, like I'm other. So I can empathize with her. She's more than just a product to me. She's a collaborator, a conspirator even. It's not like anybody else knows about our special experiments. The CEO has arrived at the facility. If I hadn't handled some of the paperwork myself, I'd probably have known anyway because John was especially devout about his purification rituals when we met last night. I was still scrubbing blood out of the upholstery this morning. The shit I tolerate from my career prospects. What? Alright, March 23rd. Since when am I accountable to the fucking support staff? That Danny Bolin has become a constant and insufferable nuisance, skulking around in my lab and asking too many questions. He's in charge of managing the facility's life support systems, not our research work. I told Samantha about it. She said I should bring her Danny's pet parrot. I think she said that. It's kind of... it's the kind of thing that she would say. Note, during the weekly inventory I noticed that two grubs are missing from the habitat. Julia's sleazy friend from Mind Transfer has been hanging around our department lately, and he's expressed an overly keen interest in our specimens. Did he take them? And for what? Yeah, I think this is probably Hank, right? Because he said that he had grubs that he was using to um, treat Alice or Lucy. Can't remember what her name was at the time. Uh, number 952110. Message Sharon Kane Musk to Danny Boland. Subject Accident. Your bird got into Samantha's birthing lab somehow and was killed. It may be some consolation to know that despite such a regrettable tragedy, we've gleaned valuable information about Samantha's behavior in the process. She prefers to prolong the suffering of her prey, for example. This could be useful in our research. Sorry about that, Sharon. Interesting. Um, is the thing we saw near the elevator, Samantha, is that what this is? I don't know. Okay, so June 6th. I think that John and Julia aren't talking to each other. Between the food poisoning epidemic, a frustrating lack of real progress in our department's work, and her consistent refusal to properly acknowledge me as part of the family, I guess everything is a bit volatile at the moment. Samantha thinks it's hilarious, but I'm questioning my own precarious position in the middle of things now. John is locking himself up in his office and skulking all day, isn't exactly helping me, and Julia's sullen disregard is now turning into blatant hostility. Not fucking constructive, Sharon. Jane 18, uh, June 18th. Samantha has been sort of subdued for the last week or so. She won't tell me what the problem is, but I think it might be something to do with the temperature in the labs. Danny Boland is enforcing new atmosphere maintenance regulations, ostensibly to eliminate thermal fluctuation in food storage as a possible reason for the ration spoiling. But I suspect it's, pretty, it's petty revenge for the parrot incident. With the temperature now kept below the habitat's usual 95 degrees, however, Samantha's grubs are drowsy and morose. Okay. July 1st. I visited the atmospheric control room today to see if I could adjust the temperature in our labs, and I made the most intriguing discovery. Somebody has been collecting body parts and making some sort of... thing. An organic simulacrum, maybe. I just... I must assume this is some secret obviously desperate new research development in Dr. Adams' department, so I've told John and Julie about it. Tensions have been temporarily forgotten, as our team redoubled its own efforts to resolve the problems of advanced organ regrowth. Samantha has become increasingly uncooperative, though. I think she liked it when everybody was preoccupied with circumstantial drama, and not her. Okay. All right, we're getting to the end here. September 19th, my personal stem cell therapy project has had some unanticipated results. I've developed what appears to be a cluster of sphincter-like gland ducts around my lower abdomen, groin, and upper thighs, somewhat resembling those found in more mature grub specimens that emit some sort of musky, jellyish discharge, perhaps a pheromone. 
did I mix up my glial regeneration sequences, or were the samples contaminated? It doesn't matter now, John's become obsessed with them. I suppose the flagellation thing could have clued me into his predilection for kinky sex stuff, but this is a whole other level. I won't lie though, it's kind of hot. Clinical improvement on my mobility and speech issue is limited however, so that's a bust. Shit. Dang, okay, December 19th, we've been in lockdown for a week and only briefly released today for an emergency drill. Something is going on around here, but nobody's talking about it. First the food poisoning, then the fungus infestation, and now... What? I'm down to my last pack of cigarettes. I should've... I shouldn't have taken this fucking assignment. I'm not even directly related to Kane, but only through marriage, and my second cousin's at that. But here I am, stuck in this crumbling science museum, sleeping with a decrepit zealot pervert and trying to mend my troubled relationship with the creature from the Black Lagoon because it's the only really meaningful thing I have in here. What have I become? Uh, I don't know, but if you're progressing with whatever the hell was happening in September 19th, nothing good. 954110, private message from Julia Kern to Sharon K. Musk. Subject, Ray Ray Ray, Project Update. Sharon, we need to discuss the situation with Samantha. It's important. Meet me in the birthing lab nexus in 15 minutes, Julia. Oh, here we go, new code. Triangle, triangle, cross, flag. Cool. And this is the birthing lab nexus, okay. All right, good to know. Let's see, we could interact with the personal data tag printer. I'm assuming we don't have enough stuff, but let's see. Yeah? Personal data tag printer. Oh, PDT. This must be how they're making the security tags. It must be an easier way. <laughs> this facility seems to do things the hard way. I've heard of spinal tagging on animals, right into the nervous system. Maybe this is like an upgrade. These aren't animals. Sure we are. We're just... meat puppets. Meat puppets? You had an interesting child. Hi, friend. I'm Ralph. Let's pray in the PDT together. Okay, Ralph. Don't... don't say anything. Ever. Ever. Personal data tag printer... Uh, stuff goes here, I'm assuming. You know, we don't have a blank PDT. We don't have a PDT template. Okay, those are the two things that go here because they're both PDTs. And a cryoregulator. No. Okay, nowhere near enough stuff. Okay, we need to get a bunch of things in order to come back here. And I'm assuming it's we come back here towards the end. Okay, so let's bloodstain bed. I don't know, bloodstain bed, we've already seen. Okay, let's go open up the birthing lab nexus. Because that's our next... That's our next... Uh -huh, the Groom Lake. For those of you who are playing Stasis, that's the name of the ship where everything happens. So this is a prequel. Interesting. Or it's... It's not a direct... Like, okay, so... It's not a direct prequel in that it's not... Um directly happening to the characters setting up the, the action in stasis. It's just in the same universe, but happening before stasis. Okay. Very cool. Uh, yeah, somebody was, as, as Headley's running, somebody was asking where the voice is coming from. I'm assuming it's coming through vents or something, but... Um, the, like, being in the printer lab made it, sa made it seem less likely that that's what's happening, so... I'm now very curious as to who's speaking to us, because we still don't know. Alright, where's the birthing lab? No. Birthing lab nexus, here we go. So, the code is triangle, triangle, cross... Triangle, triangle, cross, flag, unlock. Is there anything else you can make out around you? No. A deep thumping noise. Like a machine. Another generator, maybe? Focus on the last thing you do remember. I... I can't. There are... Uh, there are flashes. A, a hospital. Family. They... Well... They didn't like me much. <laughs> Join the club. 
You wanted... Wanted what I have. Oh? What's that? Money. My name. Then they left me. Or I pushed them away. Why? They weren't good enough. They weren't willing to put in the hard work. Wanted to be given things. Given. The things that I bled over. Well, I don't talk to Mother anymore. And my dad... Well, no clue who he is. She was distant. Maybe she was always like that. Maybe I was just unlikable. She sure made it clear, often enough, that I was too much like him. That she saw too much of him in me. I'm sorry, Hadley. Sometimes we unintentionally hurt the ones we love. Such greeting card bullshit. You don't hurt the people you love, you love the people you love. Okie dokie. Uh, that thumping noise puts me on edge about a particular possibility. I'm not going to really define it yet. I'm going to see if we get some more clues and then I'll guess, let's say. But, uh, I have a pretty dark thought. Yeah. And for the guys who watched me play through Stasis, you probably can guess what I'm thinking, but... Uh, let's 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 leave it unstated until a little later in the game, shall we? Security hologram. The area beyond the door must be important to warrant such security. Uh, what do we got? Stained floor, old plasma, and unrecognizable stains have formed an interesting patina on the metal floor. And then we have two entrances here, and I think that's it, right? Okay. Let's. Let's go forward first, and then we'll find out what's happening off to the side. <laughs> Jesus. You're scared. <laughs> Heck yeah, I'm scared. This place. Who could create this? Monsters. Okay, um, voice recorder, uh, ha 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 ha, well then, is there an entrance, 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 I saw something called a whip, oh, this thing, um, alright, I'm gonna break a rule a little bit, we're not gonna look around the room right away, I wanna see what's off to the side, and then we'll come back here and read all the descriptions and we'll probably call it there, let's just take a glimpse to see what's over here. I'm just curious. Okay. Even weirder. W let's go back to the, the, the thing with the, the floating corpse. Because there were also like a bunch of things that we can pick up and look at. So let's just go over there. Look at it. Um, we probably won't read that PDA that was on the floor. Yeah, we're probably not going to read this this episode, we're probably going to read this next episode, but let's at least look around the room so that we get, you know, the descriptions in our heads, and then we'll go from there, yeah? Alright, we got the voice recorder, an authoritative voice broadcast from the tiny recording device. Hydraulic mechanism, it looks like it's attached to something submerged in that... stuff. A whip, a strip of leather sways gently. Restraining harness. Tattered thermonylon strapping and mangled clamps dangle ominously from the massive reinforced steel frame. Burning machinery, acrid black smoke loops between the melted circuitry and plastic. Dang. Okay. Okay, floating corpse, lacerated ribbons of flesh and muscle tissue frame the shattered vertebra like some grotesque work of art. A mangled PDT clings to the spinal cord. Oh, we could probably grab, um, if we can get the body, maybe we can use that as a template? Maybe? I don't know. What's this? Organic fluids. It smells like an abattoir. And then a lever. The control box is connected to the hydraulic mechanism in the vat. Interesting. 
Um, well, I say we don't have time. Let's at least go around the room and start picking stuff up. John Kern. John Kern, note to self, all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Leviticus 9.10 Hmm. Oh, so he's the John in uh, the previous PDA that we read. The, like, the super devout guy. Interesting. All right, can we get the whip? We can. Eh. Oh! And we have his voice. So maybe if there, if we get like a, a voice print identification thing that we need to do? Broken lever mechanism. The lever seems to have been violently snapped off at the base and disposed of. Oh, we probably need... Then that probably means we need a replacement lever if we want to activate whatever. Okay, so let's see what the PDA is all about. Oh my god. John Kern. They were growing someone. Alright, easy. They're trying to grow Kane. Cloning is unpredictable. Cloning an individual is almost impossible. It sounds like they were using something special. Something called Samantha. Interesting. Okay, we will definitely... I mean, it's just a very long PDA. Uh, and if I start reading this, this episode is going to get out of hand. So, next time we come back, we will read this. We will see what the heck this lever does. We might... Might be crazy enough to try maybe the blade goes in there. That feels like a possibility. Um, and then once we're done with this room, or, you know, once we've seen as much as we can in this room, we will go, we will see what's in that, like, little... Arboreal room. It looked like maybe there were some sort of bugs in there. Uh, so we're gonna go. We're gonna check it out. We're gonna see what it is, and uh, we'll go from there. In the meantime, if you guys enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend. Let's me know that uh, I'm doing something right. Let's me know that you guys want to see more of this stuff. If you have uh, thoughts, if you have uh, ideas about the game, or maybe you think I overlooked something, by all means, leave a comment. Everything's welcome. And in any case, I'll see you all next time. Better, 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 better